name is Dragos. I'm an archaeologist with Mola Hepomis Infrastructure. And this is a project I've been doing in my spare time for the past years, but I want to ideally to make it a PhD proposal quite soon. Uh, basically, I've been looking at uh, chalk, lime, and gypsum deposits in Roman burial context, which can have different appearance, either at patches, layers, lumps, and so on. And they are found across Europe and also North Africa, although surprisingly rare in Greece and the Near East. Uh, they look quite different depending on where you are. For instance, here at York, we there's mostly gypsum, uh, gypsum cloud casts, where in some cases the imprint of the body can be noticed. In the middle picture, that's an instance from Dacia, and the famous Lady of Spitalfits in the corner. Again, the deposit can have different shapes. They are associated with various coffins or final resting places, such as wood, stone and brick, or sarcophagi. In, quite curiously, in uh, some cemetery, they are very often associated with lead coffins, suggesting quite a high status of those deceased. However, there are discrepancies. For instance, uh, spolia is quite a common behavior, especially in Dacia, but also hybrids such as uh, burial from London with, with a displaced skull. Uh, again, in terms of chemical variation, marine chalk seems to be favored in London, gypsum in York, uh, slaked or hydrated lime in Dacia, but there are also instances of the reuse of funerary monuments for, to produce lime. And, but this would, is mostly characterized by antiseptic strategies. For instance, in Egypt it happens, and also a similar behavior appears in Rome in uh, an instance of a mass burial. Uh, I treated this separately because they seem to be separate. However, what they all have in common uh, is the associated fabric and fabric impressions. In Germany, Hungary, or York, they are quite common, and not only one type of fabric, but multiple ones, similar to how we create today gypsum casts, which is quite close to the Greek of Egyptian funerary cartridge method of construction. Quite a large variation, but there is there, are, there it's quite a problematic uh, subject due to quite a restricted archaeological record for late antique masks and intentional destruction in the late 20th century. The focus on their study, starting from the first discoveries in the 17th century, has moved from simply the depositional methods all the way to gender correlates and microscopic analysis, especially to try to understand that the process of embalming. My research questions target chronological and spatial distribution, potential gender and age disparities, and the fashion and expense aspect of this type of burial. Again, usually quite rich and accompanied by quite a rich burial inventory. In terms of methodology, uh, the one I've encountered so far was with uniform distribution, and I've experimented. I'm, I'm trying to apply normal distribution in this case on a single burial, and in that case on 24 burials, to un better understand this, uh, this yeah, the chronological distribution. In terms of spatial analysis, most of them appear to have share the same orientation and to be clustered as and then to appear as clusters in cemeteries, although not in all cemeteries, and they are quite located, quite normally found in normal context. Uh, infants tend to be better represented in comparison to adults, although this might be to the fact that some burial preserve the shape of the body, but very little skeletal material. However, at least for the Eastern Cemetery of London, there is little to no discernible gen gender bias. Uh, again, going back to the Egyptian uh, Greco-Egyptian Greco masks, it would have been quite an expensive way to go. For instance, a, a document from the 2nd century says that 
it would have required a sale of a donkey and a camel for to pay for the whole burial. The public has been quite receptive to, the, to this type of burials, to Museum of London exhibitions, well, the lab excavation and the Roman dead exhibition were quite popular. Tens of, tens of thousands of members of the public have enjoyed the exhibition. But my temporary considerations are usually are mostly due to raw data management. So how do we date them before we include them and we make them big data? comparative methodologies and a disregard for traditional dichotomic approaches such as Christian versus pagan burial grounds or elite versus non-elite burial grounds. Because it both religious identity and wealth are more fluid than it seems to me at least that they have been perceived recently. Uh, in the end there are there are quite a lot of implications for funerary archaeology, especially since deposits are understudied. But this needs to be correlated with potential experimental data and larger data sets, probably. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for your attention. And yeah, this is a comparison to the yeah, comparative image between the a first century mummy and a third century burial in Trier. And yeah, it, it, I'm trying to explore basically this hypothesis. We'll see how it goes. Thank you for your attention.